Welcome to the ultimate home networking project. In this project, I'm replacing my existing home consumer Wi-Fi with a fully spec Unify system. And I'm also doing a few other upgrades along the way. If you haven't checked out part one where I outline the full plan, have a watch now. In this part, we're getting to the gear. I'm gonna be unboxing all the new Ubiquiti equipment and testing it, and then moving my NAS into a rack mount case and then setting the rack up with all this new equipment in the attic. Generally, when you sign up to a new internet plan with a new internet service provider, they send you a piece of hardware that's informally called a Wi-Fi router or modem. In my case, this device was a router, it was a Wi-Fi access point, and also a switch all put together. This meant it not only connected us to the internet, but it also had a few ethernet ports on the back for hardwiring some devices, and it also put out its own Wi-Fi signal. This is a lot of responsibility for the one device, and considering the low cost of these devices, it doesn't necessarily do any of these tasks well. Prior to this setup, I just used this device as the internet supplier, and then I used a separate TP-Link Archer C7 Wi-Fi router in the attic to handle Wi-Fi and switching to other hardwired devices. So, to recap from the first part, I purchased a few pieces of equipment. First up, the Ubiquiti USG Pro 4 router. The USG Pro 4 handles all my network routing, including connecting me to the internet, putting a firewall across my whole network, and giving each of the devices on the network a unique IP address. Ubiquiti offers a great controller software, and pairing this software with the USG 4 Pro means I'm able to do what's called deep packet inspection, which shows which applications and services are using internet across your network. It also lets me enable IDS or IPS. IDS, or Intrusion Detection System, will inspect the packets and alert me to a range of security threats, such as malware downloaded or network protocol vulnerabilities. IPS, or the Intrusion Prevention System, will actually block any of these threats, keeping our network nice and secure. The USG, or Ubiquiti Security Gateway, also allows me to connect to two different internet connections at once, and then configure it to either balance the load between the two connections, or use one of them as a backup should the other one stop working. I've gone with the second option, using both the cable internet provided as the primary internet connection and then a 4G backup from my ISP as the secondary. Next up we have the Ubiquiti US24250W, a 24 port managed switch with power over ethernet. This is the central hub of the network and where all the other pieces of equipment physically connect to each other. Here I'm connecting the router to the switch to give internet access to every device that's connected to that switch. Then I've connected every port on my patch panel to the switch. Each of these ports on the patch panel leads to an ethernet port somewhere across the house. And what I want to do is be able to plug something into any port and have it start to work straight away. Finally, we have the access points or the APs. In my case, I've gone with two of the Ubiquiti Unify in-wall HD APs. These are small, low profile access points which are powered via power over ethernet. As I alluded to earlier with the US24250W switch, this provides up to 250 watts of power via the ethernet cable, and so these access points don't need to be separately powered or plugged into a power point. In addition, the in-wall HD APs are capable of transmitting both the 2.4 GHz signal at 300 megabits per second, supporting 2x2 MIMO, and a 5 GHz signal at 1733 megabits per second, supporting 4x4 MIMO. Basically, these are really fast and they can support more than 200 devices wirelessly each at any one time. In addition, they have four ethernet ports on the bottom, so anywhere that there's an access point hardwired, I can hardwire other devices, which is really handy. Once everything was open, I threw it all into the rack and set up the software on my computer. I wanted to make sure everything worked before taking it all up into the attic and taking down the current internet connection that we were already using. Setup was fairly straightforward. I just installed that Unify controller software onto my computer and then I plugged my computer into the switch via ethernet. Fortunately, all four pieces of equipment from Ubiquiti were detected in the software. I also added a rack mountable six port power distribution unit to the back of the rack with both surge and overload protection. Now I was ready to move everything up into the attic. If you've ever heard of or used Ubiquiti products before, you may know they offer what's called a Unify cloud key. This is a small device about the size of a large flash drive that plugs into one of the ports on your switch and runs the Unify controller software that I was talking about before that I have installed on the Mac. This controller software is where you set up, configure, and then finally monitor your network. And it's pretty much the main reason why I went with a Ubiquiti Unify system over something else. To get the most of the monitoring, you need the controller to be running all the time. As a program on my computer, whenever I turn my computer off or put it to sleep, the software also stopped, which meant there was big gaps in the historical logging. 
Ubiquity solution is their cloud key, which stays on 24 7, it's basically a small computer, but instead I'll be installing this software on my server, and so I have no need for the cloud key and I saved a bit of money there. It was a little bit challenging pulling the whole rack up into the attic because it was pretty heavy, but once it was up there it was really easy to drop in place once I'd cleaned up the existing router setup. From here I screwed in the patch panel that I already had and I connected the WAN 1 port of the USG to the patch port where the internet was coming in um, downstairs. I then connected the LAN 1 port of the USG to port 1 on the switch, giving the switch internet access. So let me take a moment to explain my cable colours. I decided to go with orange for anything related to the router or the internet connection, I went with red for my access point which they required power over ethernet, and finally went with white for any other just normal device. I purchased the shortest cable lengths I could find, which was 30 centimeters at my local computer store. But even this was a bit long for some of the connections, and you can see the cables end up a bit long. Plugging each of the patch ports into the switch was my next task, and although I wish the cables were slightly shorter in some of those places, I was really happy with how it ended up looking. I also connected the 4G backup from my ISP and plugged it into the WAN2 port of the USG, which mostly completed the rack setup. Now that I had PoE running to the Ethernet patch ports via that switch, I could then plug in the in-wall access points around the house and get my Wi-Fi back online. Fortunately, the switch intelligently turns on PoE if the device supports and requests it, so I could essentially just plug the access points into any of the Ethernet ports across the house and it would start working straight away. I settled on two locations, one in my room here at the front of the house and another one at the back of the house in the living room. I figured this would give good coverage across the whole property, with particularly the one here in my room centred around a lot of their Wi-Fi clients. While it was pretty easy to set up the access point in my room here, the one in the living room didn't really go to plan. Firstly, when I tried to mount the access point to the wall, I realised as a part of the back of the in-wall AP access point, which it actually needs to be recessed into the wall. These access points are actually designed to replace existing Ethernet patch panels, which already have that hole in the wall behind them. But because this was a brand new run, and so I only, I only had a small hole where the Ethernet cable was. So my problem was that I actually needed to drill a larger hole to fit that AP flush against the wall. The second problem was the access point itself. At some point during mounting it or connecting it, it stopped turning on, or it would like intermittently turn off and on, and never actually finish that adoption process in the Unify software. I found it would somewhat depend on the angle of the ethernet cable plugged into the back of it, but then at some point it just stopped turning on altogether, which was pretty annoying. I had to go to the shop where I purchased it from, and then I had to swap it for another unit, although they were pretty good about that. My third and final problem was once I had the hole recessed further and, and a working access point, the run actually only supported 100 megabits per second, when I wanted everything to run at gigabit speed. So two termination attempts later, and I eventually had the access point working with the software now reporting a full gigabit connection. Finally, the living room AP also ends up being a great place to connect the TV. So using those ethernet ports on the bottom of the AP, I was able to hardwire that straight in. The final step to setting up the hardware was moving my NAS from the desktop PC case it was in, which was a fractal design Define R4, into a TGC3U rack mount case. I wanted to do this to clean up the area around the network rack and make sure that all my cables were essentially self-contained to the rack. It also makes it easier to move everything associated with the network in the one go. The hardware swap between the cases was a bit of a tedious process. Moving the motherboard over was pretty easy and the case already had those motherboard standoffs already in there and so all I had to do was just drop the motherboard in and screw that in. The power supply was similarly easy in that it just dropped in pretty nicely. But that's where the fun stopped. The rack case doesn't have hot swappable hard drive cages, and so to screw the hard drive into the hard drive cages required actually taking the full cage out, screwing the hard drive, putting the hard drives in and screwing them in, and then installing the cages again. But the cages are quite tall to support four drives on top of each other, so I needed a long screwdriver to get into the small crevices between the two cages to unscrew the screw. Unfortunately, my long screwdriver didn't have a magnetic head, and so getting the screws out and in back, back in was really tedious until I realised I could use a little bit of blue tack to actually stick the screw to the screwdriver. As the motherboard was uh, out of an old pre-assembled Acer small form factor PC and not a traditional motherboard that you could just buy at your local computer store, I struggled to find documentation online for it. This meant I didn't know which pins to use for the front panel connectors, including the power button, and once I did work out how to boot it, I kept getting this 4 beeps postcode, which I couldn't really look up to see exactly what that meant. 
So to solve it, I eventually just took out all the RAM and then reseeded it one by one. And then doing that process apparently fixed it. At some point I also cut myself on one of the sharp edges of the case, which wasn't really ideal. So now that the computer was actually assembled in the rack case, I was able to just slide it in the rack. Originally I was going to use rails or drawers, but the ones I thought were going to be compatible with this case ended up being way too long, and in the end I couldn't really be bothered with them. Maybe one day I'll purchase some shorter rails that will fit into the rack, and that'll enable me to actually pull out the computer um, and you know take the top off and do anything I need and then push it back in without needing to unscrew it. Finally, I just ran a quick connection from the NAS to the switch with a short ethernet cable, and then I tied it up at the back where all the power cables were, and finally we're now ready to start setting up the socket. In summary, we've unboxed and set up both the Unify router, switch and two access points. We then rack mounted and cabled all the gear and then we got the access points installed across the house. And the last task we did, finally, was we moved the NAS from the desktop PC case to a rack mountable PC case and then installed it into the rack. In the next video, we're going to go through configuring the software for both the Ubiquiti Unify hardware as well as the NAS. If you want to be notified of that video, subscribe to Technologetic and feel free to give this video a like while you're down there.